If you want to learn how to send emails with AWS, you are in the right place. The service used is called Amazon Simple Email Service, commonly known as SES. It is a cost-effective, flexible, and scalable email service that enables developers to send emails from any application. In this example, we are going to be using Amazon SES Lambda with the Python programming language. If you are new to Lambda, be sure to check out my Lambda series and let's get into it. To send an email from Lambda using Amazon SES, you need three things. The first is an Amazon SES identity. This is a verified domain or email address that you use to send emails. It has to be in the region that you want to use Amazon SES. This is because Amazon SES has endpoints in multiple AWS regions and the verification status is separate for each region. The next thing that you need is an AWS Identity and Access Management IAM permissions for Lambda to execute the API call. And lastly, you need a Lambda function with the logic for sending email using Amazon SES. Now let's start by creating an Amazon Simple Email Service Identity. Amazon SES requires that you verify your email address or domain to confirm that you own it. So please note, you must own or have control of the domain or email address that you are verifying. This is necessary to prevent unauthorized use and to stop someone from sending emails purporting to be someone or something that they are not, like your bank or school. For the purposes of this video, we are going to verify both a domain to send out emails and an email address to receive the emails. Verifying a domain means that we are verifying all email addresses from that domain and we won't need to verify email addresses from that domain individually. When verifying email addresses, please take note that the email addresses are case sensitive. So if you verify user at example.com, you will not be able to send an email from user at example.com unless you verify user at example.com as well. We are going to be verifying my domain nktstudios.com which means that I'll be able to send emails from say info at nktstudios.com, admin at nktstudios.com, user1 at nktstudios.com, etc. just by verifying the domain. We are going to verify the domain nktstudios.com using the Amazon SES console but you could also do this using the Amazon SES API version 1 instead. So just log into your AWS console, click on services and then under business applications click on simple email service alternatively you can just type here in the search bar ses and then select it i am going to use the new ses console so if you are on the classic one like this one be sure to switch to the new console by clicking here or here so that you can follow along easily after it opens up click on create identity and then under identity details on the identity type select domain in the pop-up that comes up, enter the domain or subdomain that you want to verify. Just remember, if you verify a domain with Amazon SES, you can send from any subdomain of that domain without verifying the subdomain. I am going to put in nktstudios.com and leave the checkboxes unticked as this is a demo. For prod environments, you probably want to select them. Now just scroll down and click on create identity. This will open up a verification page and as you can see, the status is pending. Domain verification in Amazon SES is now based on Domain Keys Identified Mail DKIM, which is an email authentication standard that receiving mail servers use to validate an email's authenticity. In other words, DKIM signed messages help receiving mail servers validate that a message was not forged. As you can see here, it says action required. To verify ownership of this identity, Deki must be configured in the domain's DNS settings using the CNAME records provided. So essentially what we have to do is to create this CNAME, canonical name records, in our domain's DNS settings. If the domain is with Route 53, or as I prefer, Root 53, AWS will automatically update them. My domain is not with Route 53, so I have to log into the hosting settings of my domain provider and then configure the DNS settings exactly as shown here. How you edit your DNS settings will be different based on your provider. But for me, once logged into my hosting provider and selected the nktstudios.com domain, I just have to click on hosting settings and then click on DNS editor to go to the DNS editor page. As you can see, it now says DNS management for the domain nktstudios.com. Now let's create our CNAME records. Just click on create new record. And then on the type, select CNAME here. On the record, that's where you put the name of the CNAME record. So I'm just gonna delete this and then go back to the AWS console and copy the first name of our CNAME record. As you can see, it's been copied. Then I go back here and then I paste it here. On the priority MX, I'm gonna leave it blank. And then on the content, that's where I'm gonna put the value for this CNAME record. So I go back to AWS console and then copy this value. Come back here and then paste it here. And then on the TTL, which is time to leave, I'm gonna put in 86400, which is a day in seconds. And then I'm just gonna click on create. 
as you can see, we get a confirmation that our record has been created. And if I scroll down, you can see the record here. Now do the same for the other two records. As you can see, I now have three CNAME records for Amazon SES. It's been 10 minutes since I set my CNAME records. This clock is just for me to track how long it takes for my domain to be verified. It's been over 21 hours. Let's just go and refresh to see if our domain has been verified. As you can see, our verification status is still pending. These 21 hours are still within the guidelines as AWS tells us that detection of these records may take up to 72 hours. So for progress sake, I'm going to verify two emails, one to send the email from and the other one to receive. And then when the domain is verified, I'll just create a video to show you how you can use it. To verify an email address as an Amazon SES identity, you need the email address as well as access to the email. As this is a demo, I'll be using temporary emails, but you're free to use your real email. So I have two email addresses, one from mail.tm and the other one from tempmail.io. So I'm just gonna come here, copy this email address, and then go back to the Amazon SES console, click on verified identities, and this is where you see all your verified identities. As you can see, our domain is still pending, and then just click on create identity, and then under identity details, identity type, click on email address. On the pop-up box that comes up, just paste in that email address. We are just going to go ahead with the defaults, so just scroll down, and then click on create identity. As you can see, our email identity has been created and the status is unverified. Now just click and go back to verified identities and then click on create identity for the other one. As you can see, we have two unverified emails. To verify them, what you have to do is just go to the email and then open the email from Amazon and then click on the link. So I'm just going to copy the link here. And then paste it there. As you can see, I've got a congratulations. You have successfully verified an email address. Now, if I come back to Amazon SES and refresh, you can see that this email is now verified. Now I just have to do the same for the other one. Again, I get a congratulations. You have successfully verified an email address. Now, if I go back to Amazon SES and refresh, you can see now both my email addresses have been verified. With this, we can now move on to creating the IAM permissions for the Lambda to send emails. I don't need the confirmation pages, so I'm just gonna close them. So we first need to create a Lambda row and then a policy to allow the Lambda row to send emails using Amazon SES. And then finally, attach that policy to the Lambda row. So just click on services and then select IAM. If it wasn't in the recently visited, you can just scroll down under security, identity and compliance. That's where you get IAM. Just open it in a new tab. Now select rows on the left hand side and then click on create row. Make sure AWS service is selected and then under common use cases, select Lambda. Next, click on permissions and then filter the permissions by typing Lambda basic. And then select it. Then click on next tags. We're not going to put any tags. So just click on next review. Now put in the row name. I'm gonna call mine Lambda SES row and then I'm not going to change the description and then click on create row to create the row. If everything went well, we'll get this confirmation message here. Now we need to set up the IAM permissions for AWS Lambda to send emails using Amazon SES. So just select policies on the left hand side. When it opens up, just click on create policy and then select the JSON tab. Now just select the contents there and delete and then paste the policy that is provided in the description below. This policy allows us to use Amazon SES to send both a normal email as well as a raw email. And then click on next text. We are not going to add any text. So then click on next review to review the policy. Put in the name of the policy. I'm going to call mine Lambda SES policy. Even though it is not required, I'm going to put in a description. This policy is used to send emails from Lambda using SES. Then click on create policy to create the policy. If everything went well, we should get a confirmation that the policy Lambda SES policy has been created. 
Now in the policy search bar, just put in the name of the policy you just created. For me, it's Lambda SES policy. And then press enter. Select our policy and then on actions, click attach. On the filter, search for the row we created earlier, which is called Lambda SES row. And then select it. And then click on attach policy to attach the policy. You will get a confirmation that an entity was attached to the Lambda SES policy policy. With this, we're now ready to write our Lambda function to send an email using Amazon SES. Now click on the services dropdown and then under compute, select Lambda. When it opens up, click on create function. Make sure author from scratch is selected and then under function name, give your function a name. I'm going to call mine Lambda SES demo. Now select the runtime and as mentioned earlier, we're going to be using Python. So just select Python 3.9. Now click on change default execution row to expand it and then select use an existing row. Under the rows, select the row that we just created, which is Lambda SES row. We're not going to change anything on the advanced settings. So just click on create function to create the function. You will get a confirmation that the function was successfully created. I'm just going to close this. Now select the code tab if it is not already selected and then delete the code in the Lambda function. Now paste the code that is provided in the description below and then click on deploy to save the changes. I break down this code in a separate video, so be sure to check that out. What you just have to change is the to and from addresses. So the to address is specified by destination and I'm just going to copy this address and then paste it here. And then this is the one that I'm going to use as the from address. So just copy it again and then paste it here. Now click on deploy to save our changes. The next thing that we need to do is to create a test event. So just click on the drop down arrow where it says test and then select configure test event. Give your event a name. I've called mine test email. Now this payload is required for the test event, but it is not required to send an email. If you delete it and then click on create, you'll get an error. As you can see, there's an error in your JSON event. Correct it before saving. So I'm just going to put it back, but I'll delete the key value pairs to just show that this payload is not required to send an email and then click on create. As you can see, the test event, test email was successfully saved. I'm just going to close this. And then after the test event is created successfully, just click on test and Lambda will use Amazon SES to send an email to your recipient. As you can see, the response is saying successfully sent email from Lambda using Amazon SES. And if we go to our temp mail and then just go to inbox, you can see here, hello and welcome to the SES Lambda Python demo. Regards NKT Studios, which is exactly what we have in the body here. So this is how you send emails through Amazon SES with Lambda in Python. Many thanks to Josh Piri for commissioning this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.